Aruba has been treating us quite nicely, but it's been a couple of hard weeks trying to fix everything that broke on the passage. Not knowing how long we were going to stay here or where we could go next. But every cloud has a silver lining and Aruba gave us the chance to meet some important people from my past. Hello, it's Brenda. <laughs> Three years ago, my boat broke in half while sailing from Tahiti to Hawaii. It was a devastating experience, but luckily we made it home safe. To help us through the rough times, I created a Kickstarter campaign that offered a week on my boat for the top contributors. Sadly, as we all know, COVID destroyed everyone's plans, but the time has finally arrived for you to meet a beautiful couple that won a week on Zingaro 2. Let me introduce you to Martha and Scott. They've been waiting two long years, so let's go. It's way past time to take them sailing on Zingaro. So we've got full sails out. We're doing, how many knots does that say? 8.2. Eight knots. This tack seems to be the faster tack. I'm so glad Scott's here. Thanks for that, buddy. Yep. Well, you look way better today. Oh, well, thank you. I wonder if it's from because of the lee of the island. You guys were in the lee or because you're just getting used to it? Usually, I think I'm getting used to it. Usually after about a day, people get yeah. used to it and then they yeah. stop getting so sick. Yeah. But I think the trick is to keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Lay down. <laughs> Lay down and keep your eyes closed. Even though I was always told, don't go below when you're sick. Oh my gosh. Nauseous. So, Oh, I don't know. You look cute. What, uh, did you get any sleep last night? <coughs> yeah. Let me see the end. I can't, Martha. Okay, can't. boy. Yeah. She look at she, what she's doing. Oatmeal. Tea. Oh, that's like a coffee. Oh, that's my tea. I want that. This is what I need. Some people need coffee in the morning. I take my tea every morning with a little bit of milk. That's funny because I don't drink coffee with milk. Is that a conundrum? A palindrome? A... Oh man, I can't even think today. doing seven knots and our course is about 121 you can see that little boat there I was gonna shake a reef out of out of the jib but the seas are building a little bit I think we're I think we're balanced pretty well here the, the thing about it is if I if I shake a reef out of the jib then we can point higher we'll go a little faster but and we'll point a little higher but we'll start here. So I think I think it's better if we just leave it. it. It feels pretty good now. It's comfortable. So we just put in a reef on the jib. There's a system right up here. You can see that all that is rain. We call that a squall in sailor language. It's just like a little system that has a lot of wind, and a lot of the time it'll suck up all the energy around it. So you'll get like you'll either get more powerful wind or less, a lot less powerful wind, and usually it's a little bit colder. So if you're ever sailing along and then something changes, like you're, you're healing over a lot more, or your, your, your sails just start flapping, or you, you get like a temperature, a, a significant temperature drop, reef your sails. Uh, right now we lost a knot, but we, we feel way better, way more smooth, way more in control. We're not taking so much water over the boat and we're ready for this squall to hit us. Uh, we didn't take any reef in the, in the main just because I, I can always just let out the main sheet and let the, the main luff a little bit and that'll depower it enough. Uh, the main is a, is a bear to get in. And we can, we can do it under, underway as well. 
Yeah, so this thing's just hitting us now. Definite increase in wind. This is probably five knots so far, and we're just on the outskirts of it. And it's gonna hit us in probably about five minutes. That one's gonna hit us hard. So I'm gonna put the cushions away because the, the cushions are gonna get soaked. I'm thinking we're okay with the main the way it is. This isn't too bad for the wind. Yeah, we're pointing pretty high. If anything, you can always just bear off a little bit and run with it for a little while. These storms move way faster than the sailboat can sail. It keeps the uh, Nicaraguan pirates away too. Venezuela. Venezuela. Okay, reef is shaken. Course is adjusted. The course is adjusted. We're going back up wind and we're doing about five knots. Seas look like they're about two meters. Not too bad, not horribly comfortable, but not too bad. I'm getting wet. You guys want to help me get some new eyes and glass? Help me out here. <laughs> Okay, squall has ended, sun's back out, everything's back to normal except the wind died. So uh, this is probably like maybe 12 knots of wind, 13, 14 knots of wind maybe, from tops. And um, we need to shake the other reef out of the porcel now. So go ahead, bro. Nice and easy. Now that the sail is fully out, we gotta change the car position. So I need, to, I need to move that car back just a little bit. <laughs> you just gotta wait until it, there's a, like a little luff in the sail. Nice. I love the look of a sailboat under sail. It's so pretty. Sorry, bud. I thought I had the radio on. <laughs> Have a nice day, guys. They probably picked us up in yeah. Venezuela, basically. Yeah. And then all the way here, and then they're like, okay, what are these guys doing? And we were going this way, and then they, we, we just turned in, and they're like, okay, go out and go out and see what the hell they're doing. So I've got this problem with my radio where it's um, some, sometimes it just randomly keys itself and then it just stays on for, and then it, 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 it gives me an alarm that's been keyed for five minutes. So that means for five minutes, no one, no one within a 25 mile circle of me can use the emergency channel. So I've been keeping it off. They know my boat. I don't think they think I'm a, a smuggling Venezuelans. Actually, I do have one. Yeah. Oh no, I am <laughs> smuggling Venezuelans. <laughs> what if they took her and they were like, you can't bring her here? She Say, Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> Tigers. Guys, we're smuggling Venezuelans. <laughs> so this is what a squall looks like. Blue skies, blue skies, red. So usually I'd be reefing up before a squall like this, but it sucked up all our wind and I'm trying to get the last couple miles before we have to turn on the engine. Because at a certain point, we're, we're close enough now where it doesn't make sense to tack anymore. We just need to turn on the engine and go. All right, there was a bigger squall behind the little squall and uh, it rocked us a little bit. My uh, furling line got caught and we had to furl in the jib, I'll show you. So you can see here, it's caught around this. I need some slack on the furling line! So that's supposed to go there and go through there. And I noticed that this was slack. It's supposed to be tight out here. Okay, better. This isn't bad. We can put the sail back out now. What's happening? Lunch. 
entonces ravioli, vegetales. Cierro. Mm. <laughs> Lime curacao, little curacao. Primer día y tres pescados. 